touring, we're trying to re get in the studio and record the English album, trying to do all these other things. But, you know, you hope for something, you wish for things to happen. And when it comes around, it's like, oh, you know, you want to slow down, but you have to stop and think where you came from, and you appreciate it even more. Next month marks 25 years since Tejano star Selena was murdered by her fan club president, and all those hopes and dreams and plans cut short. But her legacy in some ways is still growing. There's a huge tribute concert just announced featuring Pitbull. It'll be May in the Alamo Dome. And a series based on her life will be out on Netflix later this year. But why is the Selena phenomenon, the legacy, still growing? Well, I got an up-close look at it before she was killed over a number of years. I shot interviews with her, footage of her in the studio, and literally on stage, I'm behind the camera there at a concert at Hemisphere Park. So I went back, found some rarely seen exclusive clips, or I think she herself can give those of you who had no idea who she was when she died, or maybe don't get why she is still so popular, an idea of why she connected so well with people, the talent she had, the work she put in, and the potential that had her right on the cusp of real stardom. It's still hard to believe that Selena was just 23 years old when she was killed. By 23, she'd already won a Grammy, four Billboard, and 17 Tejano Music Awards. She recorded four studio albums, scored several big sponsors, including Coca-Cola, a major record label, Capital EMI. She was performing across the U.S. and into Mexico and Latin America, and she had even bigger plans. But all that success had not come easy at all. It's a lot of hard work that we also put into it. And uh, it's not as easy as people think it is. You come in from a gig around 3 or 4 in the morning, you have to get up at 8 or 9 to leave to, for the next show. Uh, having to always put makeup on so you don't scare anybody. <laughs> Homeschooled for years so she could be out on the road with a family band, she'd already spent more than half her young life working in, literally growing up in, the music business. And Tejano was hardly her favorite music as a little girl. Actually, I started singing country music, and uh, my dad got us into Tex-Mex music. We started playing at a restaurant that my dad owned, and eventually we started playing for, you know, weddings and family affairs that my dad kind of forced us on them. <laughs> and it all happened from then. We, we went through hard times, and we had to turn to music as a means of putting food on the table, and we've been doing it ever since. No regrets, either. But all that work was now paying off. With a stage presence and charisma of much older, better known artists, Selena had her own growing, very loyal fan base and had caught the attention of those big record companies just getting into the booming Tejano music market. We always hoped that Tex Mix Music, you know, when we got into it, we'd, would be able to expand because it was very regional at the time, you know, just Texas. And now, with all these companies coming in, uh, sponsors like our sponsor, Coca-Cola, and of course, Capitol Records, with the distribution worldwide, it, it's taken it to, to other limits. It's crossing, you know, into other countries, and people are accepting it now. And her more mainstream pop sound helped expand her appeal, as that was her style, more Latin cumbias, and less of her father's traditional Tex-Mex and its German polka rhythms. Uh, well, I'm not going to lie to you. When, I, when we first started singing, I really Really didn't like it but it's the type of music you have to listen to it in in order for it to grow on you and and now we that's all we listen to and it's great to see younger kids that that have kind of strayed away from their roots you know the culture of, of la musica tecana or you know spanish speaking and now are listening to it and starting to speak the language and it's great because you, you get closer to your roots and your culture and you understand who you are <laughs> That's one reason the phenomenon of Selena is still growing. Being a role model came naturally, and it showed. I mean, I was raised, you know, stay away from drugs, don't do alcohol. So it's really natural to me, and I think every every parent should teach their children in the household to start at, you know, at a young age to stay away from things like that. And I mean, anybody can be a role model. Anybody can. And the ongoing fascination with Selena is also fueled by so much what if. What if she had lived? Because she had so much just over the horizon. She was finally working on that English language album, 
and starting to explore another real passion of hers, fashion, with two new boutiques. Expansion plans there too as well? Yes, um, we are negotiating right now to be franchising out. Um, there's also going to be a perfume that's going to be coming out, the Selena perfume, and it's going to smell like uh, chorizo nuevos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I'm more like Menudo. That's what Robert said. <laughs> no, um, there's a lot of great things happening. We've been with Capital for about three years, and that was our initiative from the very beginning, was to cross over to the English market. And it's taken this long to finally, you know, get things rolling. And we're just really excited, and we just hope that, you know, we can do the best that we can, and, and people accept our music. And she hoped to do more acting one day after appearing in a Mexican telenovela and as a singer in a Johnny Depp movie. I could lose my heart tonight. Is he acting down the road now? I'd like to. I, I got to get a little taste of it. But I think in the far future, you know, um, I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on the music. I, I've got a lot of goals set out that I'd like to accomplish first. And of course, that is another reason the Selena phenomenon is so well known now. It's such a tragic story. Not only that she died young, but she was right on the edge of making it big. After she died, that English album, Dreaming of You, came out and became the fastest selling album by a female artist at all up to that time. That and the movie two years later introduced her story and her music to the world. And in May, you can celebrate her life at the Alamo Dome on May 9th with that Selena 25 tribute concert.